Good morning, user community. Welcome to the first ever Realize Live event. My name is Tim Cortinovis, and I'll be your host for the next three days. Just a quick background for me, based in Hamburg, Germany, I'm an international keynote speaker on automation and AI in sales and marketing. Our event is all about sharing common business challenges with other users and how you all could solve for them. We would like to invite you to join the transformation with us. In the next days, we will live some sparking moments of realization. Realization of digitalization, realization of solutions. We've prepared more than 300 sessions for you, and you can broaden your digital manufacturing knowledge, and you can get some valuable demos and updates for the Siemens software portfolio. But for me, personally, the best one is, we are here in this together, once again, face to face. And I'd like to encourage you to take advantage of these face to face format and network wherever you can. The last two years, we have learned the power of connectivity, the power of connection when it comes to accelerate innovation. And that is the most important point. This week, we will be talking about how continuous transformation has become something bigger. Something bigger and it has become a movement. So, we are in this here together, and I'd like to invite you to take this as your personal invitation to join in, to join the transformation with us. For me, personally, transformation is one of the most, the single most important issues we have to deal with in our business lives. You'll be hearing from your peers as they share their own digital transformation experience and from Siemens executives and experts. But now, ladies and gentlemen, the last time we held this event, it was still PLM connection. To pass over the torch officially to this refreshed event, Realize Life, I would like to welcome here on stage Martin Romas and Edwin Severin. Yes. And Renji is right when he states AI is the new electricity. And when it comes to doing business, we can choose whether to do business the old fashioned way, like in the old fashioned plane you can see on the left hand side, or a new way as you can see on the right hand side. Absibat Kenai Ximan Kibate. My name is Tim Cortinovis, and I'm living in Hamburg in the north of Germany. I serve my clients with workshops and talks on AI and automation. My new book is out now about sales automation. Today, I would like to, look, uh, uh, to have a closer look with you on the AI-driven enterprise of the future. How does it look like and what implications come with them? So, but first of all, in what kind of world we are living. It is really chaotic and it's characterized by volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity. Some call it the VUCA world. So, and this is nothing new. Um, COVID does make it worse, but it's, uh, it's not the driver of all this. This comes first. And when it comes to doing business, it gets worse. Uh, as our uh, as our clients expect a lot of things of us they expect convenience in the processes sustainability and they love transparency and they love to do business with enterprises driven by purpose so how can we do and deliver all this in that kind of uncertain world i think ai artificial intelligence could help us a lot to do this. 
But what is it after all? Um, to put it in a nutshell, it's nothing like you have a lot of raw data, lots amounts of raw data, then you have an algorithm that puts that raw data into order. And the result are clusters and structures and rules. And so we can reduce it to just three things. AI can help us to make prediction, to do matching and to make decisions better. So if you right now have a business problem, I think if you can you reduce it to one of these three, AI might be a good choose to help you. Okay, how can you put AI for, uh, to use in different business units? I think you can use it in all kinds of business units. We have here a scheme of all of a whole enterprise. This is people and relations, formerly known as human resources, sales and marketing, the whole management, manufacturing, processing, research and development, the underlying business model and the finance unit. So let us have a closer look in all of these units. There are people and relations. As I said, formerly known as um, HR, human uh, resources. You can do predictive hiring, you can do interviews with bots, you can detect employees' needs, and I've brought to you another fun fact. Uh, let's uh, uh, see this later. Okay, when it comes to predictive hiring, we have to be very, very careful, as um, normally the, the bias of the developers gets into the software. Maybe you know um, the big company Amazon some years ago, they um, tried to, um, to do the predictive hiring with the new software. And then it came out that, um, uh, that uh, lots of developers had some female phobia. So the software, um, when it comes to, uh, when it uh, went to, um, to proposing um, CVs for doing the interviews, just shows uh, the ones not looking female. So they had to redo the whole thing. And what is, it was a great PR disaster. Okay, so and when you now go to the interviews, you can apply AI to do some voice analysis with the candidates uh, interviewed. You can decide whether they are trailing the truth and you can do some analysis of eye movements. You can do this by applying a chatbot during the interview or also by doing it um, with a human on a camera. In a recent interview, the CAO of Zoom, Harry Moosley, stated that Zoom itself, as we're working with it here, Zoom itself uses AI to onboard the new employees. And this is getting very, very difficult in, the, uh, in times of the pandemic. Um, Zoom matches new employees and searches bodies for them. So they are uh, onboarded by some, likewise, it's like, just like it, uh, on a dating platform, they dated uh, new employees. And the company of my wife, they're using a Slack bot uh, just for matching these uh, lunch dates. Not by now, obviously, but uh, normally, if we're not living in a time of pandemic, uh, the, the Slack port matches um, your lunch date. You just tell the board, okay, I'm going to lunch today um, with whom I should go. And uh, he proposes uh, two or three co-workers to go with you. Okay, then we're going to another business unit, sales and marketing. This is my home turf. And as you can see here, the list goes longer. And I think this is, um, this is uh, because many of us in that, in that department of sales and marketing are the most laziest people. And we're, stri we're striving to use AI to do less work. You can do a lot of things here. You can do the prediction who buys, you can do the content distribution in a customer's journey. You can use AI bots in pre-sales and service. And uh, you can do the matching, which sales rep is best for that kind of client. So that uh, um, 
that you um, that you know this. Uh, you can do this phone service rating. Uh, when you do phone service, normally you get that question after the phone call: How did you like it? Would you how would you rate the service and so on? And all of this. Uh, is not necessary anymore using some voice analysis on this part and the voice analysis the artificial intelligence knows if you are satisfied with the call or not of course you can do lead generation using ai in sales and marketing and the content creation needed for content marketing and lead generation so i've brought you some examples of that area. Uh, first of all, Ergo is one of the competitors of my um, former speaker, and it's a big insurance company, and they developed the Hailbot this year. I, I think they spent some 2 million euro to develop it, and it's a voice bot, and uh, if you, you know, if you have a hail damage, uh, a hail storm, some five to 7,000 uh, customers call at the same time to the company to get the um, uh, to get the paste and uh, ergo decided to, to implement a voice bot on the one hand to make the customer happier because formerly they they had to wait a long of a long time before they um, they could talk to an agent and of course to uh, to lower the, the work burden for the uh, contact center they uh, all of them are really happy, and also the clients. And the hail bot is just in the uh, is just talking with um, clients with hail damages. So it's a very very small semantic topic, and it's very very good to handle it for the bot. Okay, Salesforce, one of the companies which is really ahead in applying AI to um, to the question uh, which lead will buy. Uh, the next. This is uh, the main topic uh, in, within salespersons. You have a list of 100 leads that might close today, but you have only time to call five to ten to, uh, of them, and you don't know which one of them to call. This is something sales um, people do um, based on on stomach, on intuition, and Salesforce comes in here and on, based on machine learning, they decide which one of these 100 leads seems to be highly um, probable to close the deal today. A sales bot, no, not a sales bot, a chat bot in the, uh, in the service does uh, the DNB bank in Norway apply. It's uh, they're called the I know bot and uh, they implemented it uh, last year, I think. And now it takes over about 50% of customer interaction and uh, all the customers are happy because they get as we said earlier they get their answer in a minute the machine is tremendously fast and they have a lot uh, lower burden of work within the contact center okay when it comes to content creation gpt3 that comes out uh, that came out uh, this summer of open ai is implemented by now by some companies to produce content that actually works in, in the marketing field. In my office, for my company, we have implemented a digital sales bot that um, takes out of the internet um, the best content on sales automation and posts automatically to LinkedIn and Twitter and we produce uh, an email newsletter on a weekly basis totally automatically with this. Okay, we're going to the next business unit. This is management and we can do scenarios. We can do decision making. We can predict what will happen in the future. And one of the first companies yet mentioned Salesforce and they're applying since two years in AI in, as a board member. And yet that AI fostered some decisions that board made and uh, asked and contradicted uh, some reports made by, by other board members. And uh, Mark Benioff, uh, the CEO of the company, stated this um, bot helps a lot as it does not have uh, that um, that it does not hide information as it uh, thinks it could damage itself. So the AI is totally emotionless in that uh, when it comes to make decisions. Another 
part of management is this question of scenarios what will happen in uh, in the future and how can we react to this um a very interesting software on that part is simscale and they're applying it to the building industry and um they allow you to to form huge scenarios within building industry and what is more it is not offered uh, on premise but it's a, AI is a service. So you don't need anymore to have large infrastructure in your, uh, in your own company, but you can uh, buy the AI from, from, the, um, from the cloud. And uh, so it's very, very easy for you to use it when, uh, when it's necessary. Okay, the next business unit we're looking on is manufacturing. Industry 4.0 is, uh, yes, we're applying lots of robots working there and uh, we can predict uh, how much do we need. And uh, I brought you a good example that comes a little bit later and personalization, of course. AI is, um, is able to personalize um, products on a huge grade. And uh, also, um, if we're talking about manufacturing software, there's an interesting company from Bengaluru, it's called Woe Labs, and uh, they build software uh, with AI. So AI building software, I think the next step will be AI building AI, and uh, this is quite far and uh, quite fast, so I have to state. Okay, an important part of a modern enterprise, of course, is research and development. And here we have global interconnectedness with a company like Iris, really, really interesting. And if you're a researcher on a topic, let's say like uh, polar um, ice melting due to the uh, climate change, Iris uh, will tell you who else is doing research on that topic and will connect you automatically and will propose you some research papers on the topic. And so this is a, a very global based approach and it's a really, really fascinating research. Okay, the underlying business model of the company, and uh, here we have uh, some very, very good examples in recent years. For instance, uh, this is a German company, Food21, so uh, therefore I have to apologize, the website is in German uh, by now, but I think they'll go global in, uh, in a short amount of time. And what are they doing? They just uh, are thinking about um, from, from the field to your plate, about 50% of all food is lost. This is a tremendously amount and it's, uh, it's incredible and terrific. And Food21 goes here with machine learning and deep learning algorithms to optimize the prediction of how much food will the supermarket sell, how much food will the, um, the milk producer sell or the corn producer. And so on all, um, on all um, steps of the food pro um, producing process, they can tell the producer um, how to do in that kind of moment. And yes, they have a huge amount of clients um, with promising results in this, and they're reducing the number of food getting lost on the process. This is a very um, promising um, company, I think. Okay, the last business unit we're talking about is finance and here we have real time forecast, cash flow forecast and robo advisory. Um, yes, it's possible by now and it's a really important thing of the finance department of large enterprises to do the cash flow forecast. How much money do I have in the bank account to spend it on investments or to uh, do whatever is necessary right now. So this is a really important one to make decisions in finance. And um, this company also very promising is Edge 21 and it's, uh, it's um, doing some hedging proposals if, you're, um, if you have to hedge your risk on your company and it takes some geopolitical information, some interest rates and so on, on a global basis. And of all of that, that AI um, proposes you how to hedge your risks. 
Okay, so now we have had a closer look to some business units and uh, how to apply AI in each and every one of them. But what are the implications? What does it mean uh, for us um, and how can we handle this? First of all, yes, uh, of course, AI keeps the black box and trustability is a huge problem. Uh, we, we as humans tend not to trust decisions that we can't understand that we can't we cannot understand the underlying um, rules that lead to that decisions and uh, this is quite the problem as we encounter if we are trying to um, to use ai we have encountered lots of fear doubt and mistrust so what can we do against it of course uh, this concept is called human in the loop uh, we can put some concise brave parents in uh, in the whole process so that we handle over the whole process to humans and uh, humans can uh, can break the process at uh, at all times so um, it's not that black box anymore and it's possible to stop processes uh, that leads us to something that is um, quite common in industry but that's not for granted uh, here you can see an example of human workers and robots working side by side but it's not long ago that um, human humans and uh, robots worked uh, together separate by cages so the robots had to work in cages and uh, this is the uh, this is the, the the vision we should strive uh, with ai in office jobs as well so um I think AI leads us to be data driven. We we work based on on data, on huge amount of data, and uh, AI allows us to to do yes prediction, matching, and decision making based on that data. But what happens? A huge problem that occurs now is a change of competencies. Formerly, we needed lots of technical experts and uh, some data scientists but now if we are applying massively artificial intelligence in our business units we need more data scientists experts in machine learning and less technical experts okay so there's a massive change of competency competencies what does this mean innovation a very very important point of each company is getting more difficult why because um, innovation normally is driven by technical experts are by people that are firm in their field that they know what uh, what could break what could bring ahead their field and uh, when we work less with that technical experts and more with data scientists which by definition understand less of uh, each field innovation gets difficult okay what else uh, what else implications uh, come with the massive usage of ai in business units conventional enterprises are um, have competitive advantage out of the knowledge of manufacturing processes uh, of the excess of the access to supply sources and of the grade of efficiency they work with so these three points are really important when it comes to um, being and taking advantage of the competition with applying ai in lots of companies worldwide this won't be distinctive features anymore i think most companies will have nearly the same conditions to work with so what does it need to have a competitive advantage right now what comes instead i think uh, one of the most important point here is customer centricity or customer obsessity customer centricity is not enough it must be customer obsessity and that this works uh, shows another time amazon jeff bezos um, just said in an interview 21 years ago 
that custom obsession is what drives him and the company. And as we uh, as we see how far Amazon went has gone by now, I think he's um, he's really right. So innovation in custom obsessivity might be um, a uh, um, an advantage point to the competent uh, for the um, the competency. And now I have a last point that uh, is an implication, I think, of uh, highly using AI in business units. And this is the exchange of data. Um, as we see it in navigation systems, for instance, by Google, uh, you deliver in your uh, car position, um, your speed and so on, and uh, you get back the information how to avoid um, traffic jam and how to drive the fastest route. And I think this will happen on a global level and with enterprises, although in the same industry, interchanging data to be faster each and any one of them. So. These are the implications I see with uh, high usage, usage of AI. What is the quintessence of all this? Um, you cannot ignore AI for your business or your institution anymore, is it? It is an important point and uh, it does not um, uh, depend so much on the budget or on the, um, on the innovation power you have, but um, the circumstances uh, bring us to, to, imp, uh, to apply AI and to, and to doing research how to use it for our company, for the benefit. And uh, it's a tough challenge, of course it is, uh, but there are lots of chances at stake. Wherever you, uh, whatever you choose, um, my advice is you start from the position you are and you look what your company, your enterprise, your business model needs right now to go ahead and not to look on the market what is technical possible, what can you do with this um, techniques. No, uh, start the other way around. And so you can decide whether to fly with an old-fashioned plane or with a more modern one. 